And often I meet people and they're like, I need a technical co-founder. And I, I, you know, but all I need is a million dollars. And I'm like, okay, well, what is your skill? And they don't have a skill. Right. And I'm like, well, are you a designer? No. Are you a product manager? No. Are you a developer? No. Are you a sales executive? No. Okay, what are you? It's like, well, I have an idea. Well, as my friend Sam Harris, I think uh, your friend as well, mm-hmm. says like, everybody has like a million ideas an hour. Like <laughs> you don't really get credit for those. Even when you're asleep, your idea is spewing ideas. Like zero credit for your ideas. It's all about execution. And you have to sitting- believe that you yourself can be the core of that execution. You yourself can build the thing and every, no matter what your circumstances are. I mean, we could talk about like structural racism and all those kinds of things that push Very things valid. down. Yeah. But from the individual perspective, when you just like are coaching or giving advice to an individual, you can literally change the world. I mean, Wall Street bets is an indication of that in the financial Absolutely. space that you yourself can have, can change the world. That That's why this country is, is amazing. Still the best country in the world, right? Yes. I mean, it still is amazing the opportunity provided to people. All this educational experience is online. And the ability, what I tell young people who are looking for advice, I say, you know, you're, the skill you need to refine is the ability to learn new skills. Mm. Like if you become good at learning a new skill, and Tim Ferriss, uh, a friend of mine, has really pioneered this. Like, he can get to sixty or seventy percent of like the knowledge in a skill in some incredibly short period of time. Now, I'm not saying he's going to become a virtuoso drummer or a great basketball player, but Tim and I were on vacation together in a, like a group vacation in Italy, and there was a basketball court. Uh-huh. And uh, I said, "Let's go, let's go shoot some hoops." I never shoot shot before, and I was nice. like, "Okay, come on, I'll, I'll teach you." And <laughs> Tim is fabulously uncoordinated. People don't know this. Yes. Like he <laughs> tried to dribble a basketball and do a layup. Yeah. And it looked like he had a blindfold on. I mean, you, you've yeah. never seen something less elegant than Tim Ferriss doing a layup in basketball. Yeah. And then he watched me do it three or four times. And I watched him study me. And I, listen, I, I've been playing basketball in Brooklyn since I was a kid. I got a couple of moves. And he was just taking notes and taking notes and taking notes. And by the end of a couple of hours of doing this, I could just watch him checking his form and figuring it out. Yeah. That's every skill in the world now. And what I tell people is like, I'm like, have you? did you watch Game of Thrones? And they're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Breaking Bad? Like, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's about 400 hours. Yeah. <laughs> How about you don't watch the next two and you put that 400 hours into learning how to be a graphic designer, a UX person, a developer, whatever it is, and learn how to add skills. And that's what I did my whole life. I was a kid from Brooklyn, went to school at night, but I was very quick to get to maybe 50% of the knowledge base of graphic design or being a writer or being a sales executive, yeah. whatever it was, a developer even. And I was just good enough to not have people be able to bullshit me like when I hired them. <laughs> and that was a big unlock. When you know enough that people can't snow you, that's a really good one. And look at yourself. Like you figured out how to set up an entire podcast. People don't know this, but you don't have a team around you. I have a team of like five, six people working but, on my podcast. But, but see, even knowing enough about to set this up, you would then be able to hire a team. Correct. And you'll be able to call them on their bullshit if if yes. they're not doing a good job. And that's really important. And I don't know that much about this whole thing, but I know enough to be able to then Correct. see who knows their stuff and not. You're absolutely right. And the the process of learning how to learn is uh is essential there because uh like I've uh, I did martial arts uh, jiu jitsu and so on and it's so funny to watch I did taekwondo yeah taekwondo is awesome yeah. Yeah. it's funny that there's some people that do an activity for years cuz to sort of elaborate on something you were saying about uh, hours it's not always the amount of hours it's the quality that you put yes, in yes deliberate practice versus yeah. just doing some behavior i mean Literally, I've been playing chess and, and trying to get that going again after watching Queen's Gambit and I got chess.com. <laughs> of course. And I realized I was just playing and I'm not getting better. And then I was like, oh, wait, there's a little analysis feature here in chess.com yeah. where it will show you your blunders and mistakes. And I'm like, oh, I'm spending no time reviewing my losses in yeah. chess and I just want to play the next game. Yeah. I should really review these losses and figure out what mistakes I made. And when I started doing that, I was like, oh, I'm getting better. Yeah. Right. So some deliberate it, practice really works. And if you want to take it all the way, uh, Magnus Carlson, uh, shout out to the guy, he has an app, but there's a few other coaching apps where you like focus on the end game. You focus drilling a particular, it's, uh, you basically don't play the game at all. You just focus uh, on drilling the, the different aspects. The openings, the, the end openings, game, yeah. The end game, yeah. And there's different kinds of puzzles. So you can really make it into a, a deliberate practice. Not to make this episode <laughs> sponsored by chess.com, but they literally have puzzles. Yeah. So I was like, Oh, and it's $100 a year for this product. Yeah. And I just thought to myself, this is capitalism. 
Yeah. They don't need to charge you $100 an hour for a lesson. They can charge you $100, and they've created the ability for you to play chess 24 hours a day against opponents who are perfectly matched against you based on your rating, and they analyze every game, and they have puzzles, and they have tutorials, and they've got everything else. It's like, just think about how much value is being provided to society because of capitalism and because competition. If you want things to get better and you want to step up your game, just make it slightly competitive. It is one of these things in human uh, existence that is so powerful. I don't know. Did you see the uh, Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance? Uh, like half of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm still working I mean, through it. He's so competitive yeah. and petty. Yeah. It's so inspiring that <laughs> all he cares about is just winning to the level of which he yeah. literally, there's like this running meme. I took that personally. And I took that personally. I don't yeah. know if you've seen the images of him sitting, smoking a cigar, looking at like an iPad of a video clip. And it's like, yeah. I took that personally. <laughs> and you can make a super cut of every time he took something personally, he literally takes everything personally to give himself that competitive motivation yeah. to win. That's capitalism. And when people are competing, man, look at what Elon did to the 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 space of cars like mm -hmm. every they were literally laughing at him in the first 10 years yeah. electric cars ha ha that company will got a business and now every single company is like we're going fully electric by 2035 and he kicked their asses so brutally that they had no choice but then to step up their game 